What can acrylic paints do? If you're new to acrylic painting or you've been painting for a while but really haven't explored or thought about that, then join me in this interactive lesson where we're going to explore 10 different acrylic paint techniques. So grab your sketchbook, grab your paint gear, and let's get started. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If you love all things art, then you're gonna to wanna to subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna show you lots of how to. There's gonna be inspiration such as paintings that I'm working on and just be part of my journey as we explore together and elevate our art. Thanks for being here. Now let's get started with our lesson. So just get some colors. It doesn't really matter what colors. We're just gonna try some techniques. So I just wanted to get, you know, different colors in the rainbow, some light, some dark. Uh, I've got a magenta here, a light magenta. I've got uh, an aqua green. I've got cerulean blue. I've got dioxazine purple. And this is a cadmium red. And this is just a brilliant yellow. So you don't have to use these same colors. Just grab some colors. You can even just use one or two to try out these different techniques. It's kind of fun to have more than one so that you can see a little bit better how things are working. And it does make it more challenging when you're trying to blend colors too. So it'll, it'll help us out. And I also have my other regular things that I use to paint, like a couple of jars of water and just an array of paint brushes. Um, some of these techniques are gonna be a little harder on your brushes so make sure you do have some that are like stiff you might want some that are kind of more soft for different reasons so but the stiff ones definitely you could probably do the whole set of techniques with a stiff brush so definitely you're going to want that uh, but it's great to have other brushes too this one and maybe even a fan brush can be helpful for one of the techniques we're going to do so let's get started we have our paint clothes on, we have our surface to paint on, whatever you choose. Like I said before though, thim a flimsy paper is not recommended. This is pretty good. It will ripple a bit, but it's okay. This is just my sketchbook we're gonna work in. And then a cloth is good to have on hand. So let's just, without any further ado, let's start with our first one. And because it's in my sketchbook, I'm gonna label it. And I encourage you, if you're using this as a lesson, to label it. The first one is called dry brush. So it will help you just knowing what it is in your sketchbook so you can refer to it, say, oh yeah, what's that? <laughs> That's dry brush. And then you can look it up online. You know, you're watching this video, you can rewatch this video, save it to your favorites so that you can refer back to it when you need to. All right, so a dry brush, you'll often have a color underneath. So you can either, we can either paint a color and then do dry brush over, or we can just do dry brush without that. So dry brush is actually a technique that involves a relatively dry brush. It doesn't have to be super dry because paint isn't dry. So it's not gonna have a lot of paint on it though. And it's, this is gonna help us create texture or detailed effects. So it's, especially useful for like adding highlights or emphasizing like surface texture. So if you were to create a, like a really textured surface and then paint over it, you could use a dry brush effect to just highlight those move, like the texture of the surface that you have. This is fairly smooth paper. It does have some texture to it. So let's go ahead and grab one of these brushes. What you can do is you can wet your brush first just to kind of wake it up. I like to wet my brush when I'm using it. Um, dab it off on your cloth there. And, and then what you can do is get some paint. So I'm gonna bring the paint over here. Let's start with pink, why not? So we're not gonna use much paint, so don't scoop up a bunch of paint. So I'm gonna dab it there, and then I'm gonna like dab it off quite a bit. So I don't really want too much paint on it. You can dab it like you're kind of jabbing at it. <laughs> And then you can eat, you can just softly use a dry brush. See, it might be too wet, so this is what we need to. If you're softly, softly, like no little to no pressure, see how it, as we're going, it at first it kind of filled in a little more, but as we go here, 
it's kind of creating this texture. You can kind of see the texture of the paper. I don't know if you've ever done one of those decoding scenarios where you, <laughs> you're trying to find out what someone wrote on the previous page and you kind of use a light pencil and it shows underneath what someone has written. Um, if you're ever been like a bit of a detective. So this could, you could use other colors to kind of blend in. So what I want to show you is how you can use this dry brush method, like in action, you know, like, let's say I need a little bit of yellow with it. And I'm really trying to get most of the paint off. Like it's just a very light amount of paint that we're adding on there. So you're seeing it's creating, creating bits of highlight on what could be clouds or, you know, like if you're working in a sky, you might use this for working your clouds, kind of wispy, just picking up some of the texture. And you can imagine if I had a really textured surface, this would be picking up the color just on the texture part and not sinking into the like valleys of the texture. So that can be a really fun. So you can see how as I bring it out, just barely any, it's almost like, it's almost like a clean brush. <laughs> you barely have any. So here it's really working well with the dry. So you can create, just imagine what that could help you create in your practice. So that's dry brush. So you can have, you know, color underneath and then go over top with dry brush, or you can just do it directly like this, depending on what, um, if you've done an underpainting or not. All right, that's dry brush. Okay, this next one is wet on wet. By the way, organize your page the way you want it, whether you want to create a grid. I'm just seeing how much space each one takes up and I'm going from there so you can follow along just as I'm doing. Or if you, if you wanted to create like a grid system and you, you know, have it organized that way in your sketchbook, that's totally fine, whatever you feel you want to do. So this next one, I'm going to use a softer brush. We're going to do wet on wet. So wet on wet is working with fresh paint mixing it with other colors to create a soft blend. Okay, so whether you're creating a gradient or you just want to blend, you know, between two colors. So let's say we take, you could, blues are really like, if you take opposite ends of the colors spectrum, you're gonna have some struggles with that. So if you're new, like maybe just start, like let's take this kind of this aqua color. So it's wet, you can have a wet brush. Okay, and while it's still wet, now you can either wash your brush or just get some of the next color, depending on if they're different colors in the color spectrum, you want to make sure that you wash your brush in between. And then I'm just going to get right into there and we're gonna blend it in. Now, when you have them touching, because this other blue is so strong, if I just keep going, it's just gonna cover that other color. So I'm gonna just wash my brush I'm gonna grab some of the weaker color, which this one's weaker. If you're not really sure, you'll have to kind of practice to find out, but darker colors are usually stronger. Uh, certain colors like red is super powerful, black, um, and just some of the darker colors tend to be a bit stronger. Adding white can be strong too. So I'm gonna take some of this other color and I'm just gonna go right in where their transitioning is and keep within that that zone and then depending on whether i want it to come further one way or the other you can go further into this side i'm gonna wash my brush again because again that blue is still kind of coming encroaching so i'm going to take some of that color and bring it towards that blended spot and just gently so you can see you can create nice transitions with that right so you can create a softer blend you know if you need something that's transitioning from one tone to another kind of more seamlessly see we didn't use up much space but I can show another example if you like let's see how it might work if we have let's try this I'm going to take some yellow just a big section of yellow here okay nice and wet there wash off my brush i'm gonna grab some red some 
red right here. And I'm going to do a dot. We're going to try and blend this dot. Look how strong those opposing colors. So I wash off my brush. I'm going to grab some of the yellow. And I'm going to kind of go around just the edge. If you wanted to kind of blend it out and see how strong that red is. I could kind of just take it out and out and out. If you want to make it a bit bigger, just depends kind of what you're creating on whether you want it to blend out further or not. Wash the brush again, grab a little more yellow because it's the weaker of the two. If you can think of your in your mind or you can practice in your sketchbook, which one is going to overtake the other? If you take just the same amount of each one and blend them together, which one does it look closer to? So if I blend a little bit of red with a little bit of yellow, like the same amount, one mil and one mil, which one would overtake the other? That kind of tells you which one is stronger. Okay, so we just blend it out until you're satisfied with the look that you want. So that's wet on wet. The next one we're gonna look at is a glaze or a wash. And this is where we thin down the paint to almost like a watercolor. And it's going, we want kind of a transparency happening over top of another layer. Maybe we need to tint it down or, you know, just tint a section of the colors. Maybe they're too bold. Maybe you just need to, for whatever reason, you just need to kind of change that a little bit, um, the whole section of something. So what you're gonna need for a glaze is an under layer. So we're gonna create an under layer first. So first let's label it wash slash glaze. And we're gonna create a thin, just create a thin layer, whichever brush you wanna use and whatever color. So let's start with a cool tone. I'm gonna start with this one here. And I'm just going to need a little more water there. I'm just going to do this. I've almost created a, a glaze <laughs> as my base layer because I've added water to my paint. And in some areas, it looks a little bit like watercolor. Actually, this will be really fun. So wash out your brush and add in another color. Just any color that you choose. Let's do pink. And I'm just gonna bring it right next to it. Now you could practice one of your other techniques while you're at it if you want. By the way, I don't normally add water to my brush and then go directly onto my surface. I'll make sure that, um, I'll go back into the paint usually. Okay, I wanna make this long enough that wherever I'm glazing still has some of the original color. So it's kind of making this rectangle, rectangular. I was gonna say rectangle and then rectangular and I tried saying them both at the same time and that's what came out. <laughs> okay, so see how I haven't blended those in. I'm not planning to, but let's wash that brush. Okay. We want to let this dry. Whenever you're doing a wash and a glaze, you want your base to dry. It needs to be dry before you add a glaze on top. If you don't, you're gonna be pulling paint away from where you want it to be. So let's let that dry and come back after it's dry or we can do another technique in while we wait. So let's, we're gonna move on to the next technique while we, while we wait for those to dry. So the next one is called now, I don't have a lot of space down here, but it'll work. It's called impasto. So impasto is almost the opposite of wash and glaze because it is using thick, thick amounts of paint. And so you're not gonna wanna use like a watery runny paint for this. You're gonna wanna use 
heavy body paints or mix in a medium that makes it heavier so that it, you can create three-dimensional surfaces, uh, lots of texture and depth, and you can use a palette knife or a brush, um, but the idea is you're actually creating real texture, not just like this gave us the appearance of texture, but it's still flat. We're actually going to create texture with thick paint. So if the paint on your palette is in a puddle, then that paint is gonna to be too thin. Look at how it's sitting in little teardrop kind of shapes. That means I should be able to use this paint to create kind of an impasto um, technique. So maybe this is gonna be your, th I usually paint really thin, so this is not my go-to type of paint style, but I'm gonna use, you could use a palette knife or you could use a brush. Let's use a brush and see how that goes. Maybe we'll try a little bit of brush and a little bit of palette knife, who knows. All right, I'm gonna start off with, let's start off with this blue. We're gonna use multiple colors for this one. But again, if you're not using like more than two colors, that's fine, you'll still be able to try this technique. Now, if I just, I can kind of glob the paint on more and I'm gonna be conscious of the way I'm maneuvering my brush. I'm not even really thinking about what I'm creating. I'm almost thinking right now it's gonna be some kind of ocean-like water. And if you wanna just work with the color on your brush and just kind of scoop up more colors or, you know, cause we're gonna kind of blend these a bit. So I don't mind if these kind of do that. But do you see how it, I'm really working with like thick paint that's creating, it's creating shadows in with the texture. And when you're working with a palette knife, typically you are doing impasto. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush and cause I'm getting too many colors on there. It's gonna get muddy. And I'm gonna get some of this dark color here, some dioxazine purple. Oh, I don't need to do it lightly. I can, what's cool is you can actually take like an impasto and then when that's dry, you could do a glaze on it to change parts of the like tone it different ways. Like if you want it to be warmer, tone a warm glaze on top, or you can do some dry brush effects, it can be really cool. Like if you did dry brush with some gold on here, be really neat. So I'm just kind of playing a bit. Okay, so that's just with a brush, but you can see the textures. that it's building up. Like you can see just from the shadows that it creates compared to the thin layers of paint that we've been working with so far. That's impasto. But let's try it with a palette knife. Have some fun. If you don't have a palette knife, try just, a, do you have a plastic knife or <laughs> something? Be creative. Maybe you have something, don't even realize it. You know, I also have this, like you can get silicone brushes. So let's try this one. I haven't used this one that much, but why not? So let's try maybe some other colors this time. So maybe we'll go in with um, pink and that really got it uh, textured up, built up. You can do all sorts of imagery with this technique. It doesn't really matter. And with this brush, I can really just use the next corner to scoop up some color. And then kind of blend it in. Get more color. And we're also working wet and wet. Try different angles of how you're holding your tool. Try different um, pressures. Because when I press down more, I kind of flatten things out and we pull things and it makes for really interesting, interesting things going on there. So you can see how you can play with, you know, a little bit of impasto and then just kind of blending wet on wet. 
you know, these techniques can work really well together. You don't want to just use one technique. You want to be able to pull out different techniques for a piece. You can imagine how using some of this is going to like work with other ones to, you know, with a glaze or wet on wet um, after it's blended on a smooth surface to create areas that actually pop out. So that's impasto. What do you guys think of that one? If you're getting any value of this video, can you give me a thumbs up right now? Let me know that you're enjoying this content. And if you have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments so I can answer them. I do check and I want to make sure that I'm effectively helping you guys improve and learn the skill of acrylic painting. All right, let's see if this one's dry. Oh, it's still a little bit wet. So we're going to have to come back to you, little wash glaze. Now, here's one problem is if I turn my page and things are still wet. So if you have a small sketchbook like this one, you're going to have some issues moving. But depending on which one we have next, we could use some space because I have 10 acrylic paint techniques. If we do five for each page, this will work. So we're going to add in the next one. And they're not alphabetical or anything or in any kind of level of importance. So that's not a problem. So whether you have to go to the next page or not, that's okay. We're going to do splattering. This one's a little messy. So make sure you're in a space that's safe to put a little bit of paint out there. <laughs> okay. So splattering, and that's probably going to get a little bit on our glaze, which is okay. You're going to want a stiffer brush. So run right here. Take a look what happens when I do this. Can you hear that? You hear the flick sound? If I have a really soft brush, it might be able to flick, but these ones, they're just stronger. They hold, they're stiffer, so they, they create a stronger flick. So yeah, you could try both if you want. So what I want to do is get some thinner paint on my brush. If it's thick, it's going to go on splattering in thicker portions. So if you want it to be a more like a fine mist, starry night kind of thing, then you're going to want to make sure you thin it out a bit so you can wet your brush. Let's go with something you're going to be able to see. So I'm going to go in with the purple so I can add some water. You don't want it to be too runny either. I want it to, depends if you want it more transparent. If it's more watery, then it's going to be more transparent. But if you want it to be something like thicker um, or opaque, then don't thin down your paint too much. Okay, you might want to wear gloves or you can use another brush. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can actually splatter by, if you don't want to get your finger all messy, you can actually splatter by hitting one brush onto that one. So actually you want to hold it so that you're, you're going to be hitting down onto a surface or something. And then the one that has the paint in it, it's going to, going to get stopped. As it stops, it's going to flick paint off of the brush. That's why you want to be in a space that is safe for splatter. Okay. I want to make sure I do have enough paint on here for this to work. Okay. Now it's going to get all over this. Okay. So splatter is going to get everywhere. Yep. <laughs> you can kind of see it's not staying in its place. Okay. So this is one way, just hitting one tool onto another and my hands stay clean. Now you can also, flick like this. And splattering can be super effective in creating like a night sky, or if you're doing just, you don't want the surface for some like natural looking elements, like when you're painting rocks or anything landscape really, and you want to create, you know, it's, it's not just a flat color. This is a great way to kind of do that. And you can do different colors. Like if I want to add some red on my palette from onto my brush, I didn't even wash my brush. I don't, I don't mind with this particular setup. So we can, you know, if we splatter onto these like impastos a bit, I'm 
sometimes you have to tip it differently so it actually flicks. There you go. So that's splattering. So you can see it's kind of gotten everywhere, but it is so fun and it really helps to add some dimension. It's just a really fun one to do. So <laughs> it's not a hard one. And the other thing you can use is like a toothbrush. So you can do that. So it, it's going to just add a little visual interest to your piece that might feel a little dull. So consider that now it is hard to control. So practice in your sketchbook. If you haven't done much of this and uh, before you take it onto, you know, your canvas piece that you've been working on and you're down to the last layers and you just start splattering. So just keep that in mind. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's finish our wash glaze. <laughs> and what we're going to do is I'm going to take a yellow and I'm going to thin it out with my brush, whichever brush you want to do doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to use this one now. You might want to change out your water <laughs> if you're using a lighter color like this. Like right now I have two water jars. This is my cleaner one. We're gonna tr I'm going to try with this one, but you probably want to wash that down, you know, if you're working on something special. So I'm going to take some yellow and I'm just going to water it down. So I have a wet brush. I'm just thinning it out. So I don't want to take a thick amount of paint. So I want to make it make sure that it's transparent. That should be good. We don't, we're not painting a large amount. And now I have a lot of yellow on my brush. So I'm just going to wash it off just to make sure I don't have too much in there. But I do want my brush to be fairly wet. But this is already pretty wet here so I'm just I'm not adding extra water I'm just gonna I'm not drying off my brush either all right so right here we're just going to go over top crossing over these two so you can see how this might be helpful with some projects I'm just gonna bring the yellow just past it so that we can see what we actually used. Now if you're prepping, you're using your sketchbook right now to prepare for a piece that you're working on, then you might actually want to practice some of the actual color combinations you'll be using and maybe even make notes of those colors in your sketchbook so that you can refer to them when you're working on your piece. Like a little recipe. The next technique we're going to look at is feathering. So like feather, Bing. feathering. This one lends really well to its name. This is a technique where you're kind of blending color softly by the way you use the actual brush. And it's kind of similar to a dry brush, although it doesn't necessarily have to be dry. So we're looking for creating soft edges. So feathering, you could use a fan brush to kind of feather things or really any any brush can feather it's just really how you're using the brush that matters most so i'm going to try feathering with this brush and see how i do and we can always switch if need be so you could it could involve blending two tones as well uh, or it could just be a method of rather than having like a harsh line you want it to be kind of more softened rather than just a harsh line right so that's created that's a harsh line on this side this side's a little more feathered but if I just take my brush and softly sweep back and forth don't add don't add more color right now we're just gonna softly bring it back and forth just softening that edge. See how I'm just gently, gently sweeping back and forth. So you can see the strong edge and then the softer edge. So let's say you have a, you've painted a sky or a background and then you want to paint something on top of it that's softer, like a cloud, but you don't want the background's already dry and 
so blending it in isn't really a, a you know an option for you this is a technique you could be using so if that was dry you could take another color and blend it very softly see how I right here where I know I have a lot of color you know intense color I can go quickly and a little more pressure and then on the edges I just lightly just brushing lightly to soften it just so it doesn't have a harsh line I'm trying to avoid avoid harsh lines Just soften it up by stroking. And it kind of pulls it out. If you have too much paint on your brush, just wash your paint brush off and keep going for it. So give that one a try. That's going to take a little more practice. It's not an easy technique for sure. So that one's going to be a little more challenging possibly for you. The next technique we're going to look at is masking and masking. You can use multiple different tools. Like there's actually masking fluid you can purchase, which is basically like a, a liquid kind of a thicker liquid that you put on your piece. You kind of, you can paint it on. Um, sometimes they have tools for squeezing it on in a certain way. Uh, and then you, once that's dry, you paint over it and then you peel off the masking fluid and that can maintain crisp whiteness where you want it. You can also use masking tape. And I've used this before on my channel to give myself nice clean edges. Maybe if you need to make a, a stronger line, but yeah, you can actually, so if you made a little masking piece of tape into a shape and you can use a cutting board type of thing, um, a special cutting mat, create your shapes. Right now I'm just tearing it into a shape. And then if you were to press it down and we didn't actually write masking, but we'll do that in a minute. So I'm going to write the word masking. So we know which technique we're working on here for future reference. Cause you might just, if you just painted that and you didn't know what technique it was, you, how, years later down the road you won't know what the heck that is like <laughs> you have no idea what it was you can even write down you know which video this is um, my name next to it or something so that you can remember where did I learn this again and if you needed to come back to it you could easily come back okay so any old brush is gonna do so I'm gonna take the same one I've been kind of using here and we can paint a color around. Now the fun thing is you can do all kinds of stuff. You can paint. So let's say I would normally use this for like, let's say a sky and you wanted to keep a crisp moon in your sky. Then you could cut a little shape, put it on where you want it to stay nice and crisp and clean and do all your other paint your sky, not having to worry about, you know, having to paint something on top of it after that's going to be nice and crisp and clean, or maybe you know, trying to paint around something, then your brush strokes are struggling to make a nice smooth transition, maybe type of thing. So we can do multiple colors here. Let's start with the pink. Why not? So you can paint right over it. It's almost like an uh, the opposite of a stencil kind of, but gives you a similar kind of effect in a way. Okay, so let's say I was working on a sky and I want, you know, multiple colors in my sky. So I'm going to add some yellow and I want my yellow to kind of mix in. And maybe some purple back over here and maybe I'm blending that in. Just having lots of fun with color. See, I'm starting to get kind of brown because yellow plus purple equals brown. To a certain point, you can get to a kind of a gray tone too. So see, I can focus on my color mixing and not worry about the actual shape that I want to keep that crisp, clean tone. Okay. So you can kind of play around 
and not worry about that. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush so we can get to the next technique. I'm gonna let that dry before trying to take that off. Otherwise I might wreck the paint around it. So we'll let that dry and we'll move on to the next one, which is scumbling. Have you ever heard of scumbling? Should we do it right here? Let's do it. Scumbling. This is another one similar to feathering in that it's the way you're using your brush. I guess that's really what techniques are, right? How you're using your brush. But this one here for scumbling is going to be kind of similar to dry brush in a way um, because you're using a dry brush. So you want to use, scumbling might be the way that you end up doing dry brush effects. So I'm going to use a brush that has stiff bristles because the mo motion that you use for scumbling will wreck a brush like this. It will wreck a brush like this. Just the motion that you use. It, it needs to be a strong brush that can take a little bit of a beating. So we're taking a dry brush. And again, that means it's not that this brush has to be 100% dry. It's just that there's not much paint on it to the point where it's like, oh, it's kind of like dry. <laughs> so that's kind of what, we're, so you can wet your brush, just dab it off so it's not too wet. And let's see, what color haven't we done in a while? Red, we haven't done red in a little while. So we're gonna grab some red and I'm just gonna dab off my red a lot so I don't have too much paint. Remember how we did that in the beginning with the dry brush. Now scumbling is kind of this circular motion. So I'm creating like little circular, like C's, I keep little circles, little C's scumbling if that helps you to remember because it's like a little c scumbling again this is a great one for like clouds see how it's creating this really nice effect now you can really see the texture that happens with this color <laughs> for a dry brush effect you can see the texture of the paper when i don't have much paint on there but if i want to add a little more paint maybe some yellow you can still scumble like this. See how it's, we're kind of creating volume now into this kind of cloud-like structure. I'm obsessed with skies, so if I keep using clouds as an example, that's why. And you can build up from there, right? Like if I wanted to just keep building up on it. Okay. So that's scumbling. It's kind of the motion that you're using, but also it's not like a thick amount of paint that we're applying. And the more I brush, the more it blends in. So if you, if you want just a brighter spot of yellow, just don't, just let it be. Don't uh, blend it in. But for scumbling, I don't really want that impasto look, right? So this is again, similar to, it's kind of a similar feel to feathering. It's a similar um, method with, it's a dry brush method. And, and so we're kind of using multiple tools here that are similar that work well together. So you can imagine how this might work for the work that you, for your own paint practice. Okay, this next one is so fun. It, and I don't use it enough in my work. I'd like to, to use it more often. It's called, well, it kind of has two names and they're slightly different, but they're so similar to the same thing that I'm just going to put them together. Scraffito slash combing. So scraffito is, is where you take, typically you have a layer of something underneath, like another color, and then you're scratching or scraping that layer off to reveal something underneath. Okay, so this is a method that has been used in, in some cultures um, for pottery and stuff like that. Combing is pretty similar. It's where you take like a comb type of tool to create textures and patterns in your paint. So you're not necessarily scraping it off, but you're kind of using that kind of comb like texture, maybe a fork. I've used that in a fork painting. 
um, that I'm, I have a lesson that I teach on that. Check it out. It's Skillshare. It's really fun. Um, it's very expressive kind of painting. So we're going to almost create our little impasto type of paint. This We want more paint on this layer, okay? So let's get some paint. Let's use some blue and get some paint on there. Maybe some yellow. Let's do some yellow. Okay. So Scraffito, we would have some kind of layer underneath that would be scraping off. But with this, I'm just going to take wet paint just for the sake of not wanting to uh, let things dry first and that kind of thing. I'm going to do two different ones here. I want to show one where it's just a little bit more flat of color. So maybe some reddish purple. So because you can use these methods without it being super thick paint. But I'll show you both because we're going to create more texture if the paint is thicker. Okay, so you can use a fork, you can use a palette knife, just even maybe the back of a paintbrush might have something you can use to scrape. And maybe you're trying to make blades of, gr this is great for if you're doing a painting that has like a field with grasses or, you know, something that has textures in it that painting the thin lines just doesn't make sense. So let's say you take your fork, you can do kind of motions that are countering the previous motions that are already there. And if you keep going, it goes, it's maybe a little too much, right? Okay, I'm gonna wipe that off so I don't have too much there. You know, you could use one edge of it. If I take my palette knife, I could make little scraping lines into it as well. What's cool is when you do something like this, you can let that dry and then do use another color on top to kind of, you do the big, a bit of back and forth with that, right? So that's kind of how I like to do things, a little back and forth. So down here, right, you could do some kind of other So you might be scraping some of the paper off. You know, maybe you have a building and you want some texture showing from it. Right, so can you see that? That was a bit harder to tell because it was more wet. So if it's more wet like that, you're gonna have some um, color remaining on the page, but it's still worth trying. Maybe you can see that a bit better. And you can see actually when I scrape it like that, it actually pulls some of the color above and below, which may be kind of of interest to somebody, you know, like if I'm trying to pull color into another area. And as I do this, it's pulling some of that top color in. It's like I planned it that way. I didn't. I was going with the flow. But it worked out for me. So you can see it's creating some highlights in here and low lights in there and actually worked well together. So that's just another technique that can be really fun to play with if you're just been stuck using brushes and it's time to, you know, expand. Try something new. So that is Graffito and Comine. The last one, and by the way, we will pull off that little masking tape bit after this. The last one we're gonna look at is stippling. Now, this is by no means the, these 10 are not the only techniques, but as I researched all the techniques and just from my own experience, these ones I found the most helpful. I think these are gonna be the most helpful ones. There are certainly other methods, but I think that you, if you can hone these 10 techniques and really excel in them, you're gonna be able to make incredible paintings. Like honestly, if you just learn a couple of them, you'll really be able to enhance your work. But these 10, I really think, show a, a good range. Now, different brushes can create different techniques too, but 
can di create different marks, but I wouldn't call them techniques so much as just different tools. But let's get on to stippling. So stippling is kind of like your pointillism. So it involves little dots dabbing. It's kind of like dabbing paint and it's it's going to create help create texture. You can use little dashes too, um, but if you look up pointillism, you're gonna see stippling as its basic <laughs> technique. So really you could just use one technique for your whole painting and it can still be an amazing painting. You don't have to use all of these techniques by no means. I don't use all of these techniques in every painting. Um, it might be too much, you know, that might be too much if you do, but it might be okay too. So stippling, let's go on, let's get on with it. Let's do this. Looks like we need some pink. Let's use some pink here. So I can just kind of dab. I use this a lot when I'm doing trees, when I'm doing fields of flowers and things like that where I want that textured look. You could use it on buildings um, to create maybe um, various textures again. You can see where I had a thicker amount of paint. If you didn't want that look, if you want this kind of more um, separate look, then you just dab onto here first multiple times before you get onto the surface that really matters. So you can see it creates beautiful texture. If I take some turquoise maybe, dab it off a bit there first. Let's dab it over top a bit and kind of start blending over, creating some visual interest here. So just, I encourage you to try these with different colors, different brushes. Now the stippling again, you're dabbing like this. You're not going to want to use a soft brush. You can use other brushes. Just if you're doing a lot of it, you're going to ruin the brush. <laughs> so these ones were made more for this purpose. You can even get brushes that are made for stippling, like flat head, super stiff like that. But I like that this, gives me a little bit of variety and a little flexibility. So it doesn't have to be super, super stiff. We want a little bit of movement. So again, the more I'm dabbing, the more it blends. So if I want an area to be kind of more pure toned, then let it be. So you can see how it's created some pretty, some pretty textures in there. So, so much fun, right? The sky is the limit, even not beyond that is <laughs> the universe is the limit. So that is that one. Let's see if masking, let's give it a little quick light tap. Oh, we should be able to lift it from there. You can use a tool to help lift it if it's in the middle of your page. You might need to use something like, like I am. I'm using a palette knife to carefully Pick up my paint, I'm trying to lift it so you can still see what I'm doing. Just be careful around those edges. Sometimes when you use these things, they still might want to peel off some of the paint. So you can still, even though it has done that, you can see how it's kept that pure background. So if I tried painting white over top of this, it wouldn't be the same as this bright, bold bit that it's kept protected from the paint. But yes, it does have a bit of an edge that needs cleaning. But I would imagine if even if you're using masking, almost always you're still painting on top of that after, like if I'm just wanting to, in fact, let's do that. Let's not just talk about it. I wet my brush and I'm just gonna do a thin, kind of like a glazed layer of I create kind of brownish tone. Here's a little extra for you. I think I want to be a little bit blue because I want to be different than that. Okay, let's see what color that is. Okay, kind of a brownie color. And, and I'm just going to paint it in there. Dry off my brush.
Okay, so you can see how we had a lot of fun with it, picking up some colors after. So you can go in after and actually paint something on, like if it was, if that was meant to be like a moon type of thing. It doesn't look like the moon exactly. Some white would have helped, um, but you get the idea. So that's the last of all of our techniques. Well, what do you think about all the techniques we looked at today? Let me know in the comments. And if you got any value out of this video, give me a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it and you want more of this kind of content. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye now.